Ken Trahan with Lenny Van Gilder. It's our first NBC Bank weekend preview. Brought to you by First NBC Bank with 32 locations throughout the greater New Orleans area and beyond. That's First NBC Bank, proud sponsor of SportsNola.com. The New Orleans Saints convene in West Virginia next week for training camp. We've talked about the various questions. Most of them surround injuries and how players will be not only heading into camp, but heading into the preseason and ultimately the regular season. Guys like Kenny Vaccaro and Jarris Bird and... Patrick Robinson and John Jenkins, among others, Lenny. And that would seem to be the big concern now that the Jimmy Graham situation has finally been put to bed. And pretty much as we expected with maybe one exception. I don't know if we all expected this to be a four-year deal as opposed to maybe a five- or a six-year deal. But nonetheless, it is exactly what we expected in terms of a significant signing bonus and a minimal salary in the first year. So there is money savings in terms of the salary cap for this year, and it's, it's backloaded in that regard. In regard to the injuries, what we've seen in the past with Sean Payton coach teams is he's going to be very cautious with guys who are coming off of injuries and kind of ease them back into things. Maybe you know, give them a practice off here and there. You know, let them ease their way back. Maybe not even play in the first preseason game or two, and just kind of you know slowly work their way back to be a hundred percent in time for September seventh because you know you've got six and a half weeks to get ready for that game. So a, there's a long time between. When training camp opens next Thursday and the time you open the season, the Sunday after Labor Day. The good news is with Bird and Vaccaro, you have Raphael Bush. So you've got depth there regardless, and you should be in good shape. And at cornerback, to me, the key guy is Patrick Robinson because if he comes back 90% or 100%, he likely gets a starting job, and thus you can use Champ Bailey in a nickel role so that you don't have to have the wear and tear on him of every down football. Exactly. And I mean, this, and remember this, too. Look at what has happened with the NFL. How many downs are you truly playing in a base defense of four down linemen or three linebackers or three down linemen and four linebackers, depending on what your base is, and four defensive backs? It doesn't happen that often. Probably more than half of the snaps in the course of the season, you're going to play with five and six defensive backs on the field. And, and this division has only gotten more difficult with trying – to cover the forward pass with some of the rookies that have come in, some of the other moves that have been made, uh, you know, to cover these guys six out of the 16 games on your schedule with some with some size. The one guy I'm going to be interested to see during the course of camp in the secondary and seeing how he develops is, is the rookie Gene Baptiste out of Nebraska because I think he's got to be an important part of what they do in some of these sub packages. Yeah, I think with the guys on hand, there's not as much pressure on him to be an immediate impact guy. You can bring him along slowly, maybe be a Don by a, not a nickel guy, but certainly a guy that you don't have to have start immediately based upon the kind of depth that you've built. The other guy to watch, Victor Butler, obviously, coming off of injury. Sticking with football, the New Orleans Voodoo, they won a game. They snapped a seven-game losing streak at Jacksonville on Monday night. Thrilling fashion, 36-35. Josh Jasper of LSU in his first game with the Voodoo kicks a game-winning field goal. They dodge a field goal, which was missed at the end of the game. Interesting because Jacksonville's ownership had guaranteed a win. That's never really a good idea. Not normally. I, the thing I love about arena football that's different from the NFL is some of the the – not just the nuance of the game, but some of the things that you see in, in this game that you would not see in an NFL game. You know, the, the late game onside kicks when you have the lead mm -hmm. to try to steal another possession. Right. It was a bad snap on the field goal before the, you know, it wasn't a true fake, but just to, you know, to see the guy rolling out and getting the, getting the first down to give him another chance at the game winning field goal that in the end they ended up missing. But, you know, some, some of those kinds of things that do, that do happen. You know, in, in arena football, you know, the, and the game has evolved over the years. You've been a part of it for, you know, go, going back to the New Orleans night days. I mean, it was automatic on fourth down that you just lined up and tried 50-something yard field goals, you know, and, and now you go for everything on fourth down because – it's you know it's just the field position the, doesn't matter right exactly it, you're going to score no matter what you just you go out there and you know just try to steal every possession you can and turn it into turn it into points yeah and then of course Courtney Smith with the number one highlight on ESPN top 10 with his catch over the boards which is always an intriguing element of arena football too so Saturday night they host Orlando 7 p.m. Smoothie King Center on Rush Radio 99.5 WRNO and WRNO.com and Orlando's the division leader. They've split two games this year. Big game for Orlando. 
Stay tuned. Zephyrs had a big game. They hit six home runs in their first game back from the All-Star break. Talk about taking off in the second half. Uh, the, the, the new ballpark in Omaha is – it plays like Rosenblatt used to play, and that the ball jumps out of there. And, and, really and then there's the, the NCAA ballpark, which plays just the opposite. Right. Well, they built it the wrong way, and it's in the, <laughs> middle of the middle of town where no wind blows, and when it does blow, it blows in. But it's – you know, it is it is what it is. But it's a you know, interesting that they did take the approach to building two ballparks, one in the suburbs and one downtown, instead of all coming together on one. And it's, uh, you know, it's 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 an intriguing park to watch games in the the new park in the suburbs. And uh, you saw what the Zephyrs did last night, uh, just swing, swinging the bats big time to get the second half started. Basketball. The Pelicans have been extremely active. Now they've added Jimmy Fredette. Uh, they've also re-signed Darius Miller. The trade went through earlier this week. Uh, they made another deal on the side. I mean, it has been a dizzying week or so for the Pelicans. It's what normally happens at this time, and you know, and and it even got magnified a little bit by the all the uh, you know the workings of the LeBron James and the Carmelo Anthony situations, and that so many teams were holding everything up, waiting to see what was going to happen there and the trickle-down effects. You know, they had to be able to keep cap space available just in case they were able to attract one of those players. And just the whole effect of those teams holding up space, not making moves, now they're making moves. That brings other teams into play. It's just... You know, it, it, you're right. Dizzying is the right word, but that's what's happened here over the last week. Yeah, Russ Smith's fine as well. Summer League play going on. Stay tuned. It will continue to evolve. British Open going on. I guess the big question's there. Tiger Woods, how well will he continue to play? Uh, Phil Mickelson probably going to make the cut heading into the weekend. And beyond that, who's going to win and where we're at in professional golf today? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, Tiger getting off to the start that he did on Thursday is – good for golf as a whole i mean obviously the you know there's there's more you know attention to golf when tiger is playing and playing well uh will he be in position on the weekend that remains to be seen but you know it's um you know still when you're when you're playing a sport that's on the air at you know early in the morning because it's on the because it's uh, across the pond it's not going to get the attention now you're going to come back here uh the pga coming up in in a month's time the the final of the four majors uh, you know, it, it starts to, you know, as football season starts to get cranked up, it loses a little bit of its attention as opposed to the Masters in the U.S. Open. It's my attention. I'm up early. I'm watching it every morning early on, and I'm enjoying it. So there you go. Nice camp coming up. All-State Sugar Bowl, RNL Carriers, New Orleans Bowl combining on that. Yeah, uh, it's a cheerleader and football camp uh, Saturday morning at Harrell Playground. And, uh, you know, you can, you can go to the Sports Foundation's website, GNOsports.com. You can pre-register for it, or you can actually sign up uh, Saturday morning beginning at 8.30. And it's nice that these, you know, these bowl games in associated, association with some of the other local entities put on these camps uh, to be able to give back to the youth in our city. Check out our high school football previews. The latest ones up include St. Charles Catholic, uh, Riverside Rebels. We'll have McDonough 35 up Sunday as we continue to unveil those on a daily basis. Also, Rick Gailey's good story on the Louisiana High School Coaches Association meeting and some proposals moving forward that could change the football playoffs even more in high school football. Always good stuff at sportsnoah.com. Check it out as we do every day. Yeah, we try and uh, hope you stay with us as well and hope you like the new look of Sports Nola. I do. It's all good. It is all good. Have a good weekend. We'll see you Monday. That's our First NBC Bank weekend preview brought to you by First NBC Bank with 32 locations throughout the greater New Orleans area and beyond. That's First NBC Bank, proud sponsor of SportsNola.com. For Lenny, I'm Kenny. Have a great weekend, and God bless you.